What's up YouTube, thanks for tuning in this video. In this video, we're gonna talk about the management of RV parks, but first, make sure to like and subscribe so we get off to a good start. All right, so management of RV parks. It's a sticky subject. It tends to be the dirtiest of all the jobs, really, and it can be pretty hard dealing with tenants and dealing with people while you're uh, working on an RV park. But in this video, I wanna talk about maybe a streamlined approach, something that could be easy for you um, that can kind of let you be hands off uh, in the management of your RV park. So I have a 14 lot RV park, a 10 acre property. And what I did for my management was I always wanted from the start, <clears throat> me and my partner, we wanted to be able to take ourselves out of the property. We wanted, to be, we wanted to be able to take ourselves out of the project so we could work on other things and that we're not tied down to anything. What we did essentially was we took one of our lots that would have been to a client and we dedicated it to our property manager, which was actually my business partner's brother-in-law and sister. And we said, hey, you guys can build a house here and stay here long-term. <clears throat> uh, in exchange, you need to manage our park. So your rent is doing either landscaping, checking people in, doing some of the accounting, uh, or doing something management related, maybe you know delivering products to people, stuff like that. But you have to manage the park, essentially and you have to check people in when people come to visit to check out the spot or whatever you have to show it to them etc uh, and for us we liked it and we thought it was worth the money that we're giving up because we're always going to have somebody on the property we're always going to have somebody on premises and that we has shown us to be helpful because we always have a pair of eyes and a pair of ears out on the property so we're never just leaving it by itself number one um, and number two we want to be able to eventually leave you know and do other things and it's very helpful to have people in, you know there we don't always have to be running back and forth they can you know check up on things and you know a lot of things can be done remotely now so if we need anything done we can just call them you know maybe it's something with the water or it's you know turning something on turning something off it's kind of a hassle to have to drive you know all the way there just to do something like that when we can just call somebody and have them do it for us so that was huge for us uh, but think about it if you have an RV park or if you're thinking about it. Uh, maybe there's somebody in your community or someone in your family that you know that you could put out on the property in exchange for free rent, but they need to manage things. And I know it kind of you know hurts to have to give up a spot, but in exchange you get a lot of security and you get a lot of value out of having somebody there all the time. And I'm a living proof of that in that if you have somebody there that you know that's trustworthy, it really goes well. And I think, you know, you can always have a safe bet out on the property. So that was huge to me. And for them, I mean, it's easy, you know, to live somewhere for free in exchange for just, you know, checking up on some things and doing landscaping and accounting. Perfect, you know, great, great deal. Um, I did sign a contract with them though. So that's another thing. If it's a family member or whoever, make sure you sign a contract with them, even if they're family and they're trusted and good people, because you want to make sure that they're following through on their promises and that you've, you are following through on your promises. So I always do contracts no matter what it is, but just a little tip. Um, next thing for management that really helped us was doing background checks. Now this is super important. I think if you're a RV park and you're an affordable RV park is doing background checks and I just think that, you know, RV parks are kind of known for getting like trash, you know, kind of people, no offense, but getting, you know, some drugs going through and, and just people that have bad records and stuff. And, you know, they tend to live in trailers and stuff. So uh, to get rid of that, you know, stigma, we do background checks uh, for whoever it is that's coming into our park. They have to not have any felonies, um, not anything serious. You know, if it's something minuscule maybe for instance like they had possession of marijuana or something you know we may let it slide but if it's you know assault or whatever typically we do not let that slide obviously and also too in our you know what we do if we do allow somebody in that has something on their record is we make them sign a contract that says if the police get called even one time they need to leave um, and that's the power that you have as a land owner is that you can write in contracts and i always make sure that Whoever comes onto my property signs a contract. They sign a lease agreement um, stating the rules of the park and everything of that nature. And if they violate those, they have to leave. And that's why it's good to get in a landlord friendly state because if somebody violates your rules of your park, you can legally remove them by force. Um, so make sure that you are 
setting in place what the rules are for your park and that people are abiding by those rules and that's up to you whatever you want those rules to be for instance for us some rules we have are no open fires outside of your rv space and that's important because we don't want any fires obviously um, and there's a designated spot for that but that's something to think about because you know people if they're just you know if there's no rules and they can just cook their barbecue or whatever who knows what that could lead to you know that could you know lead to a fire or whatever and we don't want that um so you know think about those things also too uh for instance we don't let uh dogs roam around on the property they have to be you know inside um and or you know they they can't be just you know if somebody's checking out the property we can't have dogs coming up to them you know so we do allow for people to build a makeshift little fence in which they can stay um but generally speaking we do not let dogs just roam around the property um and that's something that you should think about because it's your park you can do whatever you want the management's up to you um but i think in all ways try to keep it clean try to keep the trash out uh, that's really important too um your neighbors, I mean, your your clients are gonna be interacting more or less with their neighbors, and you don't want trash people out there. You don't want, I mean, the, tr the more trash you let in, the more trash your RV park is. So try to keep it thorough. Um, what we did to get, so in order to get our background checks, um, we actually, what we first started doing was flipping mobile homes, and we worked with a notary who was also the park manager, and she did background checks for everybody. So we kept her contact and now we just send all of our potential clients to her and she runs them through a background check and it's a minimal fee. Uh, but maybe there's somebody in your community that can run background checks, very worth the money because you wanna make sure that you're not letting in people that have felonies or stuff like that. Um, so most of this stuff I'm talking about is regarding, you know, maybe like a smaller park and more affordable long-term park. Um, but if you're doing more of a tourist RV park, like a lot of travel coming in your way, the management is going to be a lot different. Management is going to be a lot different. It's going to be more hands-on. And whether it's you or somebody else, if it's somebody else, you're going to probably need to pay them a salary as well. My park is very simple. There's really not much to be done. And so really there's no salary that's needed uh, other than just free rent in exchange for checking people in and stuff like that. But if you have a bigger park, you got a lot more traffic coming through. Um, you're going to be more hands-on. You're going to have to be out in your property essentially daily, probably showing people where their spots are, um, you know, meeting with clients, whatever. And it can be more complicated. And if you do have a property manager, you're probably going to need to pay them a salary. Um, also, too, you know, possibly if you have more big parts of infrastructure, you may need a handyman to come out and fix. But nonetheless, I think no matter what size park you are, it's good to know people. You know, for instance, like it's good to know, like we know like an electrician. So if anything ever happens electricity wise on our property that we don't know how to do, we can call this person and they'll come out and check it out for us. Or the other day we had a pipe get busted and <clears throat> immediately we had a plumber come out at eight in the morning, fix the pipe. And it's just good to know people like that. And I think if you're gonna start an RV park, first things first, you should know a general amount of people that can do certain skills so like try to find an electrician try to find a plumber try to find you know landscapers maybe or whoever um that way when something does happen because things will happen that you know who to call or you know how to do it yourself but just be ready for that um, so i think those things are important but if you are a bigger rv park you're going to need to have those people on hand quite often probably um, your property manager is going to be doing a lot more work so they will probably need to get paid a certain salary also, you need to decide if you're going to do background checks for people that are just staying for a couple nights or if you're not. For me, I do background checks no matter what, just because you don't know who's coming in, who's coming out, and you just want to make sure that whoever's coming in does not have any serious crimes because it can lead to problems, especially with your neighbors. You don't want to, if, if you have a long-term rental situation, I think it's very important. Short-term depends on you. If it's maybe just for a night, maybe not. If it's more than a week, maybe so. Uh, that totally depends on you. Also, like, are you gonna, re are you going to, are you going to regulate the certain RVs that come in? That's what we do. So typically, we don't do anything before 2005. So if it's an RV that is before 2005, we need to look at pictures of it and make sure it's still in decent condition. Uh, but typically, nothing before 2005. We want our RV park to look generally 
pretty clean. I mean, decently, you know, it doesn't have to be over the top, but we just want to, we don't want it to look like a trash RV park. We don't want to be, you know, we don't, we don't want to have that connotation of like uh, drugs or like just trailer trash, you know what I mean? So we want to kind of try to keep it somewhat clean and you can do your part by regulating the RVs that come in. And I get it, if it's, you know, if you're not, if you don't have a lot of business, it's it's tough to turn down somebody that is trying to come into your park, but they have a 2001 RV, right? So that's up to you. I would just at least ask for pictures and make sure that it's, it's decently clean. You know, if you are gonna let something in that's older, um, that's up to you really, but we try to do 2005 and later. But there's little things like that that you gotta know as you know a manager of your RV park or if you're gonna have somebody. You need to know whether or not you're gonna do background checks for people that are staying nightly and whatnot. Um, but just be prepared in management overall of your property because things will go bad at some point. You know, the, the water will give out, you know, some kind of pipe will burst or the electricity or something. Um, you know, tenants will act crazy uh, they won't pay that's another thing is make sure that you're enforcing late fees that way you really bring the hammer down on your tenants that way they pay we've had to enforce late late fees many times and it's extra money for you um, but really the idea is hey you know you're staying in our spot you need to pay and just be in a spot where or be in a state where if need be you can kick your renters out um, and make sure you put everything in your lease agreement uh, but thanks so much for watching guys that's kind of just a little breakdown of the management and kind of what we did and what maybe you could do uh, but leave your comments down below with what kind of ideas you're working with and what your process is i want to hear from it if i have the time i'll get back to you as soon as possible uh, if you want to see how i started my rv park watch this video to the side here if you want to see my journey from a bus boy to an rv park owner watch this video to the side here make sure to subscribe thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video